So Lynn, welcome. The UK Theatre Awards and uh, outstanding contribution to British theatre. Uh, and you're the first, I think, we think you're the first journalist, critic ever to receive the award. Well, I suppose in some ways that's not perhaps that surprising. Uh, uh, and I think it's kind of um, thinking outside the box, the fact that you have given it yeah. to me. And of course, I just feel so enormously humbled that, um, that the industry sort of are so appreciative. Well, I mean, many congratulations. And uh, how, how did you get started uh, as a journalist in the arts, if you like? Well, I think I'd probably uh, be quite typical in terms of the fact of somebody who became an arts journalist, mm. and particularly somebody who became a theatre critic. I certainly uh, sort of didn't shoot out of my mother's womb with a small notepad <laughs> and, pad and thinking I must yeah. be a theatre critic. Um, my uh, journey was a different one. As a child, I um, thought that I might act. I didn't get into drama school. My parents mm. said, oh, go to university. Yeah. I went to university and I directed a lot, uh, but I didn't really know how you then set out to be a theatre yeah. director. But I did know how you set out uh, sort of to do journalism to some extent. So in a way, I fell into it a bit by accident. Mm. Uh, I joined the um, magazine City, City Limits, uh, where I eventually became theatre editor. Uh, and then I freelanced for a while before I joined The Guardian in 1995. Yeah. And I guess one of the things people would talk about with you is that you're not just a critic. You're someone who's mm. sort of fascinated by... I guess the mechanics of how theatre is made um, and actually not just in the capital, not just in London, the whole breadth of the country. So where does that kind of great interest that's beyond criticising or commenting on what's on the stage, but looking uh, beyond that, where does that great interest sort of come from? Well, I think it, it just comes from the fact that I'm always interested in how things work in mm. the kind of nuts and bolts of things. Uh, and I I think that quite early on in my career, and certainly when I went to The Guardian mm. and uh, I started getting the opportunity to uh, travel quite widely, um, it seemed to me that actually that there was a lot of really interesting work that was going on out of London that was often mm. overlooked. And I also think that, you know, what I do, I, I think I've been in a hugely privileged position mm. because actually I've been handed the opportunity to sort of think out loud, really, about theatre. And the other thing that's just been great, partly I think because I do travel, is that mm. often when you travel, people are very pleased to see you. Absolutely. Uh, you often have a cup of tea with them. And actually, of course, over a period of uh, years, sort of uh, yeah. 20 years or so, I've, um, you know, I, I've, I've gained a lot of expertise and knowledge and, and people mm. often have been quite willing and very generous yes. in the time that they've given and me. And I guess given these are the UK Theatre Awards as opposed yeah. to awards geared to London, I mean, yeah. you are a sort of great champion, aren't you, of, of theatre, the length and breadth of this kind of amazing country? Well, because there's so much good mm. stuff really going on. I, I mean, I really uh, don't agree with people who say that there is a gap between what is happening in London mm. and what is happening in the West, rest of the UK. And in fact, as London becomes more and more expensive and difficult, particularly for young artists to live in, mm. uh, what we're actually seeing, I think, is a talent drain out to the regions yes. where it is possible to uh, hook up perhaps with your local theatre and to run an independent mm. company and uh, make, uh, yeah. you know, and survive in a way that mm. it's increasingly difficult for young artists in London. And you only have to look at the nominations actually for the actual awards yeah. this year to see. I mean, it literally yeah. covers the whole of the UK. I mean, yeah. Yeah. and that's just the, the small number that we're able to make the, the short list. Yeah. It's, uh, you know. and, but I have to say, I mean, I am sort of worried about the future. I think mm. as criticism Absolutely. has is under threat, uh, then actually it is out of London. It is those young companies who I think will be most affected. Harder for them to kind of get profile, you think, because there isn't the writing about them. Yes, quite simply mm. that, um, you know, it's that old, uh, perhaps the yeah. cliche, but that idea that if a you know, tree falls mm. in a forest, uh, and nobody's there and nobody hears it, um, yes. you know, did it actually happen? Yeah. Uh, and I think one of the roles of criticism uh, is not actually necessarily to sell tickets and say this is good and bad. Mm. I think one of our functions is to spot talent and to support yeah. the future. Yes, and actually, yeah. 
you know, we always talk about this in terms of theatre PLC, if you like, but yeah. the number of famous directors and actors and back of house kind of creative staff who've come through regional theatre and yeah. not just to theatre in London, but to movies and Hollywood and everything. I mean, it's extraordinary over the years, isn't it? It must I think be something you've noticed a lot. Yeah, I mean, completely. Uh, you know, the West End uh, and indeed the British film industry, Hollywood, the BBC, all of the beneficiaries of what goes on in regional theatre and in mm. independent theatre outside of London. It's also really important to remember it's not as if the route is back to London or eventually to London. There are enormous numbers of absolutely world-class mm. artists making world-class work who are choosing to do that in the regions and absolutely. not in London. Mm. So what makes uh, what still keeps you excited? You know, you're, you're kind of, I mean, just take Edinburgh, you're infamous for sort of doing three or four weeks and six, yeah. seven shows a day. Yeah. And what keeps you excited still after so many years of, of doing this work? What, what's the thing that kind of gets you out of bed in the morning? Um, well, quite simply, the possibility of seeing just that little spark yeah. of something that will make you go, oh, that's mm. really interesting. Or simply that you go, I just love that. Mm. And one of the things that I think is just so fantastic about my job, you see a lot of, I see a lot of theatre and some of it is not so good. But when you see something mm. and it is just fantastic, it's just like falling in love all over again. And you get that kind of rush of hormones and you just go, I know why I really love doing this. Yeah, fantastic. So where, funny question, where, where's the next Lynn Gardner coming from? Um, I think that there are a lot of people mm. out there um, who um, have realised that actually that the future may not be in the mainstream press mm. uh, and um, it may be through blogging, through different sites. Um, I think there's been a whole shift in culture uh, that has both facilitated that and in fact of course has also caused the difficulties yeah. um, that are recurring for the mainstream press. Um, but actually I'm really optimistic mm -hmm. because one of the things that I would say is that when I started out writing about theatre, basically on the whole there were about 14 white Oxbridge educated men writing about theatre and now there are huge numbers Absolutely. of people writing uh, and they come from all sorts of mm -hmm. different backgrounds and I think that when people are thinking, talking and writing about theatre that can only be good for theatre itself. Absolutely. Well look on behalf of UK Theatre and the board of UK Theatre you know congratulations and uh, we look forward to presenting you with your award in a couple of weeks time. Thank you very much. Thank you.